Alright guys, so let's talk about how to calculate the cell potential. That's this guy over here. We're going to call it E0 at times, um, and at other times we'll call it cell potential, but we mean the same thing. Now, what it is, is it's how much voltage, which is electromotive force, is exists between the two half cells of a cell or a battery. So that could be also say a cell. Um, and it's measured in volts. Now, let's have a look at how we do a cell equation. So first, we've got our cell over here that we're very used to by now. Like we've seen this a few times. Um, so we've got the oxidation side, which is zinc, which means it's our reductant. And we have our reduction side, which means our oxidant in copper. So oxidize, um, zinc is oxidizing, copper is reducing. Now, the way we would actually write this, if we were trying to describe a cell, describe, summarizing a cell really quickly, is we just go zinc solid, line, zinc, um, 2 plus aqueous, double line, copper, or copper, copper ion, line, copper element. Okay, so zinc element, zinc cation, um, double line, copper cation, and copper element. Now they all have different parts. What are they? So this is the oxidation half and this is the reduction half and that is the way it goes. Oxidation, reduction. Um, over here we have our anode which for those of you who aren't sure the anode is the electrode so this is an electrode that loses electrons. The cathode which is our cathode over here is the electrode that attracts electron. That That is the chemistry definition. Okay, that's the definition we're going to use in chemistry. And this double line here, this represents the salt bridge. Um, so that's it. You need to know how to do that. Now, how do we calculate this? That's when this table of standard reduction potentials comes in. Okay, And this means that it happens at standard conditions. So we've got this formula here. E0 equals the E0 of the reduction plus the E0 of the oxidation. Now, the E0 oxidation, the way you work it out using this table, is you reverse the sign of the E0 reduction. So just say that tin, the SN is tin, in the L, in whatever cell we're going to set up, it is oxidized, which means we go from, so we would actually be using SN2 to SN2 plus plus 2 which are minus, which means that becomes a plus, plus um, 0 0.14 volts. Now, if we have a positive number down here, so this is positive, that means it's more likely to gain electrons. If it is a negative number, that means it's unlikely to gain electrons. What that actually means when you're working out your, which one's the oxidant and which one's the, um, or which one is oxidized, which one is reduced, if it is positive, it is likely to reduce. If it is negative, it is likely to oxidize. So if you've got one which is more negative than the other, um, it is more likely to be the one which reduces. Now, you want to be able to calculate the potential, um, the cell potential of this galvanic cell over here. So zinc copper. There are steps. Remember, these are not magical things. These are processes. And if you do them one by one, you'll be fine. The first, you write the half ionic equation. We're going to do this in a second. Then, you determine which ones are oxidized and which ones are reduced. So you determine which is oxidized, which is reduced. You find the values on the E reduction, E naught reduction table. Okay, so they're just on the table here. Here, no point in pointing. Um, reverse the sign of the oxidized species. And finally, add them together. That's it. This is a calculation that comes up time and time again. And it's that simple. It is a process. Know how to do it step by step by step. So let's do a work example. Um, first, again, calculate the potential of this experiment here. Now, we write them both out as though they are reducing, okay, because that's what our table tells us. So we've got the copper reaction here, and it's plus 3,4, the zinc one minus 0.76. Now, because this is minus, that means this one is most likely to oxidize which means okay so that this is our oxidant 
No, this is our oxidized species. This is our reduced species. So, we turn this one around, <coughs> and in doing so, we um, reverse the sign. Then we just simply add it together, and it becomes plus 0.34 plus 0.76 gives you 1.10 volts. Okay, that is the that is how much electromotive force we can get from this cell. Now, if you get a negative number, and that will happen sometimes, if you get a negative value when you do this, no spontaneous reaction will occur. As long as it is, as long as the number is positive a spontaneous reaction can occur. And that's a lot. See you later.